Hey, dude. What you doing? Just checking that lens. So imagine this. Picture this. Okay. You're in the dunes. You're riding. Okay. The Maverick X3 has a gauge cluster. It's beautiful. For temperature, they've just used bars. That's it. No <laughs> actual reading of the temperature. Eh, Am I yeah. overheating? Am I not heated up enough? I don't really know. Frustrating. Picture this. It's cold outside. Yep. You have a stage six with the 85. Okay. Even it's colder. Barely cracking one bar. <laughs> Do I need to block the radiator? Steve says maybe. What we do know, our friends at Razorback. <laughs> there it is. Have come through are. with a solution. So heck yeah, dude. I'll show you the photos in this installation manual. What we have here is a Maverick X3 engine temp gauge. Looks just like all the regular gauges. You've seen these before. We love them. Yep. They got good uh, CVT gauges for your belt temp. They got YXZ engine temp gauges. Now they have Maverick X3 engine temp gauges. Yep. So this handy dandy sensor plugs into the bleed hole uh, somewhere on the side of your Maverick X3 engine and then mates up to the gauge via this cord and the next thing you know, boom, engine temp. So we're going to mount it using one of their mounts on the uh, dash of the X3 on the gauge cluster. So they'll be able to do the engine temps at all times. So this is very important to have. Not sure cool. why it wasn't included from the factory. Yeah, it's nice to know, man. So I run a Razorback engine temp gauge on the on the YXZ, and I never had temperature problems with it. Right. But the peace of mind is really good, and then yeah. knowing when your machine's actually warmed up, you know, at a, at a quick glance, is is good. Right. So, and especially when you get into modifying things like this, you got you just you got to keep an eye on things. So. Right. So we're gonna put that today in the old Beast Mode X3, and this thing is what I would call not clean. <laughs> Uh, the mud from the mudplex, oh aka the my textplex. gosh! I was really going to try to avoid getting any of that on camera, but no, we have to show them. Um, so first of all, when we got back, it was pretty much freezing cold, and then we went right to Mexico, and then it actually was freezing cold. So now, if we want to go outside and wash something, it's in the freezing cold. <laughs> it turns out you just don't want to do that ever. So then you're left with uh, just freezing cold, clubs frozen of Texas clay. Anyway, <sighs> stay tuned, watch this, we'll have a good time. Sidebysideblog.com Garage Instructions. That's Something weird. Something that we normally don't refer to, but these are so good, we've referred to them. <laughs> it turns out it actually helps us figure out where we want to do this. So, Maverick X3, you got one if you're watching this video. If you don't have one watching this video, go out and buy one. Anyway, step one, buy step an X3. One, X3. Step two, locate the uh, water pump plastic shroud cover, which is here. Located, check. <laughs> Second, third, whatever step, take that cover off. All right, okay. we may be splitting the steps up too much, but using your favorite T30. Okay. That's my favorite. I don't know about you, Doug. What's your favorite bolt? I like the T27s just because they're weird. That makes sense. Actually, for me, 10 millimeter because it's the most annoying. <laughs> it reminds me a lot of myself. So shocking turn of events here. It's loosening. It was also already loose. <laughs> Pre-loose. Perfect. I'm not sure if that's shocking or not, but uh. so you're just gonna struggle getting it off with your finger for a while. Wouldn't be the first time you struggle getting something off with your finger. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> so, uh, wow, that one's also very loose. Could stand to use a shorter extension here. Not doing it. Just fight through. Get it done. I don't want to move. Just going to take the extension off. So, what's up? Pretty easy, though. No, this is not a big deal. Right. This should be a super easy mod, and I think it's going to be... Like Doug said, a good peace of mind. You want to have peace of mind when you're out there riding. You want to know, hey, my overpriced man golf cart, not breaking. Right. I could have bought a Jeep. Oh. <laughs> Look down and just say, hey, my equipment, it's doing well. 
Right. And for the low, low price of, who knows, 200 bucks? Yep. We'll just say 200 bucks. If it's more than that, we'll eat the difference. Side by side blog parts dot com. <laughs> It'll be 200 bucks. <laughs> Actually, I don't really know that, to be true. Uh, Doug, do you have any indication on price? I don't know how much they are either, but that seems close to what the engine temp for the uh, YZ is. So. Right, get that out of the cool. way. Perfect. Wow, look at that thing. Look at that. Cool, man. That is like super official looking. I've not seen this part of the engine before. Yeah, I actually haven't pulled that off. Wow, that was a really fast zoom. Yeah, it's on fast zoom now. <laughs> Sorry. For Baja. So is this uh, where it goes? I think right above that, man. So if you move your finger up about four inches, I believe, uh, a little to the right. I think the one just to the right of that, I believe it goes in there. It's kind of blocked by a hose right now. Yeah, they didn't show this in the instructions. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it's so got that weird casting underneath it. So it must yeah, be this right one. there. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Pretty sure that's it. So from there, I guess we just use the same T30 and pop that thing out. Yep. Not really going to be too concerned right now about things leaking out. Why? Why? Because this is Doug's garage, that's why. <laughs> I was zoomed in too far. That was, why? That was intense. Why? <laughs> I don't know how you do this uh, kneeling all day to work on stuff. This sucks. Uh, yeah. My feet are already asleep. Anyway, we'll just power through like Doug was saying. Really going to lose some coolant here, according to the instructions. You got so, it, man. Whoa! Losing a lot of coolant. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little geyser. <laughs> uh, really expected it to stop flowing at some point. <laughs> yeah, I mean the system is sealed, so you would. Okay, <laughs> let me get the sensor real quick. <laughs> Where's the copper washer? <laughs> By the way, don't forget the copper washer. Uh, Very important step here. Copper washer is in. Okay. Cool. Is it still just leaking everywhere? It's still leaking. What the hell, man? I would have thought it would have stopped, or, or at least <laughs> slowed down, but. And that looks like, why, man, that's a pretty long hole. Anyway. Yeah. It's just, oh, every time I touch that hose, it's going off even more. Yeah. Okay, get that in there. Start there we go. In. It looks like it's Dex Cool. Look at that color. It's orange. Hmm. I don't know what size this is. Looks like a 10, maybe. Anyway. Simple enough, slick. man. Yeah, that's pretty easily accessible compared to other installs that we've done, so. Well, and then some of these engine temp gauges use something that, like, goes in line with the coolant hose. Right. Like, you would be, you'd have to break this loose and lose a crap ton of coolant. Or and, cut a hose yeah. and put a fitting in there. Yeah, screw It'll that, do all man. sorts of heartache. So, I'm going to get a 10 mil to tighten that down, and, uh, no, we're, we're done with that stuff. Is it a 10 mil? Overall, good size, 10 mil. <laughs> that sounds like a game. Is it a 10 mil? Is it a 10 mil? Do you have the wrench? Not sure how tight to make it. I'm gonna give it a one ooga dooga. There it is. Perfect. Okay. I heard it click. Yep. So I think. I think there's actually a torque spec somewhere, but don't worry about that. Torque spec. Um, good and tight. Yeah, it'll come so, with instructions. Yeah, seven foot pounds. Is the actual torque spec. How you gonna measure that? Yeah. Unless you have a crow's foot or a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little this of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a lot of opportunities to just zip tie off to an existing hose or wire and just uh, run the sensor wire up through the center tunnel. What do you got there? Look at that. Ooh, Un that spot. Oh my gosh. We need to use that. Yep. Maybe go up to that. That'll click right in, actually. Wow. Listen, Razorback. Wow. You guys are doing this right. You're doing it real right. Look at this. Watch this. Boom, dude. <laughs> that was awesome. That's actually pretty sweet. That's cool. Okay, so I'm going to get the length of uh, wiring to connect this to the inside of the cab. Woo. And then uh, you're not getting used to the zoom, are you? No. I'm Woo. struggling with the zoom. <laughs> it's a lot of slow zooms and fast zooms. And... Yeah, it's okay. Ugh. The wire. Sensors, wiring, sensing, the sixth sense, beast mode, makes sense. Perfect. Makes sense, wow, that was smart. Okay, so this looks like the same on both sides. Doesn't really matter which side you choose, I'll choose this side. Perfect. And so I don't know if we should route it through first, or try to figure out how to put this through that way. Hmm. I'm inclined almost to route it through first. 
Yeah, so maybe we should take the seat and that inspection panel off. Seat. This seat ain't moving, dude. <laughs> Have you seen this seat? Uh, can you get the panel off without... Oh, yeah. uh... oh, I see there. Okay, I was thinking down low. Simpson, dude. They're smart. Smart. Yeah. Turbo. Oh, I see it. Is that the right spot Ugh. to put it through? I don't really know. I can't I'll reach it. Probably not. It's okay. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh god. It's a real disaster here. Oh god, my. Oh god. Oh, Seems like god. that'll work. I mean, it's through the inspection hole, not the greatest spot. Oh, I see. Okay. Hmm. For video's sake. No. Oh! I don't know. Ah! Shouldn't have snapped it in there. Real amateur. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh. Here we go. Okay. These sweet connectors. Waterproof. IP67. What does that mean? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. So could we run it lower? Where are my other accessories ran through? No, they ran through there as well. Are they? Remember okay. the ghetto O2 sensor? Yeah. That's really ghetto. Wow. Oh well. Okay, so what's that going to do then? No, it's going to bring it out here, which isn't really what... Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Look at this. It's unfortunate. Oh, fast zoom. Oh no. Oh no. Boy, we should probably do this the right way. What do you think? I support doing it the right way. Yeah, we can get in this tunnel somehow. I'm not really sure how, but... I just don't hmm. want to even be in here right now. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate that we're no. Listen, uh, when this thing's clean, having to choose this project tonight, but when this thing is clean and it's warm out, it's not going to be a whole lot of work to do it the right way today. <laughs> we're just going to do it our way. Just yeah, one of those things that make the product work. Right. Are you sure we can't just take the seat out, dude? It's so bad. Uh, the seat doesn't come out. The seat right. unbolts. You gotta unbolt it. <laughs> I mean, look at the wiring for the oxygen sensor. That's just gummed oh up right there. Oh my gosh. I hope you cut that out of the video. It's just jank life. No, dude. This is real life. <laughs> Not proud of this, guys. Really not. So we really just can't get down there, eh? Because we no, can't get, get the seat out. Oh my gosh. Like, you know, things and stuff. Stuff <laughs> and things. I don't know if I can support this or not. <sighs> I get it. I mean, ultimately, like, this is a video that we might even put on our parts YouTube page. Listen. And suggest that people watch for the install. Listen, okay, this is what we'll do. Okay. Not only are we going to do it right, we're going to route the wiring for that wide band correct as well. I like that. I'm just going to do this real right. I like that. Not run the wires up over the roof. <laughs> so after much deliberation, we're taking the high road here. <laughs> taking the seat out. So you're not going to have Simpson seats, but I think your stock seats attach fairly similarly yep. to this. So. Four bolts hold the seat to the seat frame. Uh, we're going to remove those and then get the seat off of the actual base and then have access to the center console here where we can, uh, you know, route things the right way. Okay. We're here. We're taking the harnesses out through the seats. Listen, all our friends at Simpson, I'm really sorry. I didn't take better care of this thing. <laughs> Not really known for taking good care of my stuff. I mean, this is really a maybe a new level. <laughs> hey, it's getting used. And when we tell people stuff holds up well, you'll know that we're not lying. Look at this. That's a Rotopax under the seat. Oh, neat. <laughs> what is this? Did you know that was there? Yeah, I did. Is that Just like a. Oh, one stick. of those. Uh, yeah, cool. I'm not sure why that's there. Maybe it still works. Um, okay, so here's our wiring from our uh, Razorback sensor. We'll just kind of put it off to the side. Yep. Let me dig out just for 
<laughs> my own sink here. Is there fuel in there still? Yeah, this is filled with T85, man. Oh, cool. The good stuff. Hopefully that's sealed up fairly well. And we've got a lot of random, uh, just super hard Kirkland water. <laughs> An old wipe. <laughs> what else? Uh, oh, the ear cover from my Cena. Hmm, cool. Old battery. These are going to go in the trash. That's probably smart. But now all of a sudden we can do a good job. All of a sudden. So that's cool. So this is what we're trying to get access to right here, guys. So check this out. So you got a little bit of fire extinguisher out of the way. I assume you won't have that in there. Um, and then you can see the panel here is what we're trying to get off. So if I remember right, it might just click into place. No screws, eh? Or was, was that a screw? <laughs> that one wasn't. Uh, and then from here, we have access to everything. So we have access to our power block, which is OEM factory power block. That's super sweet. And now we have access to the tunnel leading from the engine compartment to the inside of the unit. So this is what I didn't take five minutes to do when I installed the wideband. And that's why I just got wires just hanging all around. I'm actually not even sure if we documented the wideband install, did we? Gosh. Um, man, I don't think we did. It was a last minute thing. It was right before race day. Had a bunch of blog fans over. Yeah, so. Real um, hectic. PLX Evo wideband. It's, uh, it's on the unit now. So we had it since race day, and that's just to basically track your air fuel ratios to make sure you're all good. And uh, we did that. Works good. Works good. Beast mode dialed in. Plugs into the map tuner so you can see your AFRs live, and then you can data log them as well. Sent it off to our old friend Todd at Evo. I said, hey, bud, is it running good? He said, she's running A1. Cool. I'm not gonna mess with that anymore. Anyway. Okay. So here we are. Here's what you want to do. So, let's you do got a good job. wiring from the sensor. Okay, yeah, you want to do a good job, step one. Step two, hook all your wires up, whatever. Step three, get your sensor in, just run it through. Come on now. Come on now. Window here. I believe in you. I believe I got the sensor wire. The harness is getting full through. You want to keep it tight on that side, and we're going to zip tie it all in when it's ready. Cool. Yeah, there she is. So we can come up through here. I'll be running behind all this stuff. Maybe you can tap into a couple of the uh, spots where there's already some zip ties. And then it'll come out somewhere in here. I think one of these covers comes off or is exposed for wires to come through. I forget where that is, but... We'll figure it maybe out. Maybe from the other side. Oh, yeah. Like, that's just a... Yeah, that thing's like just a beauty cover right there. So you can see kind of all the wires running behind that. So you can take that off. Yeah, or I think just it. run, yeah, under here and then shoop, pop it up through there over to the dash. Yep, so it looks like a single T30 there. And man, it might be it. Yeah, just well, one on one on this side. Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Just the two. Well, there should be one on this side, but it's uh, <laughs> not hmm. in it. Shocker. Y used anyway. to used to was there. Used to was. <laughs> Is that a new thing? It used to was there. It used to was been there. <laughs> come on, baby. Okay, there we go. Okay, now it should come out. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, oh, that's something might be. The PLX. Okay. See that? Look at that. Oh, yeah. He's didgeridong to the back. That's all right, so wiring. we got all sorts of space now. This is good. Overall, this thing looks great. Yep. So we'll keep on feeding this through. I'm not really sure how that's supposed to get up there. I think we'll get it. I can put the camera down, give you a hand, tag team this thing. Tag team back again. <laughs> all right, check this out, Battle. Look in there. This side cover just comes right over. Just pops off as well, huh? Okay. So you have access to this entire area to route your cables. So this to everything now, you yeah. You can take this one down through, bring it. Look at that, Jeez, Louise. Bring it somewhere through here. Overall, doing a great job. <laughs> Overall, this good job. Right up through here. There. Look at that. So this is all just little snap covers. Cool. So you just freaking rip it off. Heck yeah, man. And then from here, 
It looks like we can probably Gosh. put it behind that beauty cover. Yep. And there we are, dude. Yep, just tie it off over there, come right up to the gauge. Sensor life. Oh, hey. He wants to blow me out. Um, but yeah, so this is the gauge mount here. If you guys have ordered a uh, Razorback temp gauge from us for your belts, you probably have gotten this if you have an X3. Uh, they also make them for razors now, too. Super cool, though. And boy, they use some thick plastic. There we go. <laughs> But yeah, this is uh, the little billet cut piece. Comes with screws, and it mounts right there. Nice and easy. You can use it on either side, right? So if you're running yeah. two gauges, you can run two, yep. you know, both up there if both. you want. So I believe there's little torques here, probably T20, T25, something like that, and they give you a little bit longer replacement screws to mount the uh, gauge mount. So we'll get that mounted up. We'll slide the gauge in and see how it looks. Easy peasy. Yeah, I mean, there's just no telling what you might find under those seats. Yeah. Just dead am animals. Aminals? Dead aminals? <laughs> there could be an aminal. <laughs> Screw one. Gone. Screw two. Still here. Present. So and yeah, this uh, little baby torx here is a... Uh, Gift from one of the fans, dude. Oh, the little that stubby? Set. Yeah. Those are neat. Stubby set. I've used these before. Very useful. I might try to use the factory screws, see what that does. Yeah, there's probably no reason they sent you longer ones. Probably not at all, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, dude, that's not going to work. My main issue with that is the longer ones were a Phillips head. Which uh, I would normally refer to as an X head, but I X get head. left out of the garage for that one. I'll get you one. No, I'm using them. Oh, okay. I got the short ones, the stockers are in, but. Oh, I see. I'm using them. I don't follow the rules, dude. When this thing pops out at 100 miles an hour, <laughs> in our record speed breaking run, not my uh. fault. Just kidding. I would never go that fast in this thing. That would be scary. What are your thoughts on top speed, Doug? I think uh, the current record, very achievable. Not yeah. to say it's not impressive, because it is. You wouldn't catch me doing it. I think there's opportunity there. I would do it. Really? The correct setup? Yeah. Ballsy. That thing's in, dude. It's not right. short. Where's the gauge, bud? Mm-hmm. Gauged. We're about to get engaged. Should I live there? It's a terrible joke. <laughs> Is that terrible? Uh, I mean, maybe. Nah, maybe it was okay. This one matches there's the been, other one. There's been worse jokes. Oh, yeah. That's tight, dude. I feel like I want the other one up here now, too. What is that phrase from the Evan Fitzgerald? When, when something uh, turns it to two hours. hours. You guys like Evan Fitzgerald, by the way? I Comment if you like that song. Great song. Legend lives on from... But you're probably going to get a copyright strike now. Oh, crap. Because it's <laughs> such a good rendition. Uh, that thing's in, dude. That looks so cool. It does look good, man. That is so cool. Yeah. A lot of times you think maybe you don't want to mount a gauge, you know, way up there like that, right in direct sight. But and in then, this case, they look so freaking good. That yeah. And you put it in and realize you do want it mounted up there. So this is the... That's pretty long. You might be able to reach that. Yeah. That's what she said? <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> really, dude? Just cut that out. I'm not sure if I'm going to reach the battery or not. Or at least the post, I mean. That. Probably not. Yeah, gosh. Might have to extend them just a little bit. Yeah, so for all you guys that don't have a PLX, there is a spot somewhere in here. Right there, this connector. It does have a positive and negative accessory on power. So you could maybe tap it into that. So we could place into that. Might do that. Or run wires down here. Yeah. Your call. Doesn't matter to me. All right. So wires connected. Yep. So we ended up using the power for the PLX wideband, which taps into this little connector here. We just split that off. Uh, you guys can run it with some extended wires back to the block or tap into this little plastic guy here. 
So this is going to be the first fire up. I'm just getting the sensor plugged in now. This will be the first fire up of it. And if it doesn't work, you won't see this. Crap. <laughs> Look at that. It works. Heck yeah, man. Engine warming up. Looks neat. Wow, it starts at uh, 170. Oh, okay. Interesting. So it really, uh, really makes you wait. Yeah. I suppose, though. This not is a smart. bad idea. Right. Blue. Cold. You see that? Yeah. I can't, uh... I should have probably got rid of the rig here, but... Well, we'll kill the light. Maybe that'll help. Focus. It's just get Focus. It. It'll go. There you there go. There it is. Look at that. So it's got blue for cold, and then the little uh, bar graph on there. Yeah. Overall, good unit. That's, uh, that's slick, man. Be real easy to just glance down, see where things are at. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, now we've got both Razorback gauges. This is pretty cool. All right. Part of me kind of wants to have this one up here, but maybe just for ease tonight. I'm used to looking down here now, like my, like my mind goes to this spot. I mean, it definitely makes sense to have it up by the gauge, yeah, right? So you don't have to take your eyes as far away, you know, from the trail as... You do now, but... Right. So, having said all of that, um, we're going to clean this wire job up. So we have the sensor harness that we kind of need to get back in here. And then all these panels I have to snap back into place. Um, and then get our passenger seat back in. And then get this thing a little tester. Cool. Alright. See what it runs like with the 85. I'm not sure how cold it is. Probably pretty cold. I'll help. Perfect. Got her back together, bud. There it is. Seats on, panels are on. I lost one of the clips, whatever. Gauge is on, gauge is wired in. Sensor harness is in and zip tied. All we gotta do now is put this uh, whatever cover back on. It's, oh yeah. Of course now filled with coolant. Um, and missing some screws. Uh, there's one right here. Oh, that's one, okay. I mean, how many screws do you need? Hopefully, Hopefully one. one. Actually, there's the second one right there, but you'll get it. We're good. So, overall, I would say good mod. Yeah, I'm really happy that it turned on the first time we tried it out. I think that was important. And uh, as usual, Razorback stuff just literally the utmost quality. Yeah, it's well thought out. Yeah. They give you everything you need. These guys really don't mess around with their stuff, right. so... High-end stuff. You pay a couple extra bucks, but it's absolutely worth it, and it's obvious why it costs more than uh, yeah. some garbage that you might get from wherever. The whole gauge cup is solid aluminum, and they run it down yep. on a lathe to make a beautiful gauge. Yep. How does it get any better than that? So, if you want to buy these parts, sidebysideblogparts.com. We'll have this for sale by the time the video comes out. And uh, probably around 200 bucks. I think it's a pretty good option. Really committing to that, eh? I think it's 200 bucks. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we'll get this other bolt on and uh, we'll try to heat this thing up. Just see what it does. So I'm curious to see the gauge work. So okay. it's super cold outside and I'm also on E85, which normally uh, makes the car run pretty cool. So I don't know if we're going to drive it around or not. Maybe for funsies, but we'll uh, see if it works. We'll do something. Looks good, dude. Dang it. Ruined the shot. Am I pulling something out? No, you look good, man. Right. She's just cold, creaking a little. Uh oh! Hey. Man, so we're like uh, 30 seconds out of the garage. And you got a reading already, eh? Yeah, it already says 104. I'm not sure if you can see it. Uh, it's so darn friggin' dark outside. Probably not. You gotta Fast give it a second. Uh, yeah. yeah, 107? Yeah, temp's going up, man. So this is really, really interesting. Okay, cool. I'm glad it's working. So the bar graph on the bottom doesn't start to show until you're like really in the operating range. Yeah, that's more like for a quick glance sort of thing, and the number will just be there. I think starting, I don't know when it started. I think 50 it started, so. Cool. Yeah, really cool, man. Oh, hey, there you are. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> so I'm going to throw the harnesses on and uh, really see what beast mode feels like. It's been like a really long time since I've driven it, since the Texplex. Yep. And uh, I really haven't had grip with stage six since I put it in. Oh, here. that's interesting, like, yeah. At Lamis, I didn't really have any grip. At Texplex, there was absolutely no grip. 
like Texplex was terribly slippery. Yep, and it's below freezing now, so the ground is pretty hard. Ground is hard, ground should grip, and it's probably gonna feel pretty interesting. Cool. So my body's ready for a little rippage. Send it, dude. It's gonna be cold, but it's gonna be worth it. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not riding in it actually. It's yeah, uh it's, pretty it's real cold. pretty frigid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like I don't think I even ripped up any grass. <laughs> right. So maybe it's a little too frozen, and I think what might have happened is it's been above freezing during the day. Yeah. So it's all just like icy on top instead of just hard and grippy. But right. So the motor is still running pretty cold, right? Only about 150 right now. Okay. Which does make sense because it's freezing outside. So yeah. Yep. I don't know if we're gonna get to operating temp or not. But uh, it's not going to stop me from doing some donuts around you and uh, <laughs> sending this episode off. It looks so. pretty cool with the Christmas lights in the background. Oh, not a bad point. It's kind of neat. So that might be a good reason to go in and uh, put a little something in front of the radiator, man, to get some more temperature for this thing for the winter. So Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting point. So the first bar just came on okay. at about 159. Okay. So, uh, yeah, all right, interesting. So now you know what that means. There's some correlation there. I don't want to give all the correlation away because then you won't buy the product. <laughs> so right. from here on out, it's a big mystery. Correlation. So and we'll just uh, have to do a little donut. Send it, man. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for liking. If you don't do any of those things, you should definitely do that. So, until next time. Okay, okay, see ya. <laughs>